Hey guys, a few weeks ago, we were rebuilding a front porch for a client and there were three wood columns that needed new round bases and square portions on the bottom of it. Uh, the client was on a budget. They did not want to spend 600 bucks for a permacast fiberglass column that I had suggested, plus our installation fee. So they asked me if we could just put some wood under there and make it look good um, and fix the columns. So I told them I could. And basically, I had to make some square bases, but I also had to make some round portions like this. And um, look, cutting circles freehand, whether you're using a jigsaw or a bandsaw, it's not easy and never precise. And, and I didn't want something not precise. I wanted it to look right. So um, also not wanting to spend a ton of money to buy an extravagant jig or make a jig and buy something at Rockler, I decided to make a quick circle cutting jig here on my bandsaw. And I've done it a few times in the past, and but I've never done a video on it. Um, did you know that you can cut pretty much all kinds of size circles on your bandsaw by simply driving one nail into a piece of plywood extension table and just spinning that wood through? It's simple. You can do it. So um, the nail is basically becomes a pivot point for your workpiece, and you just spin. So that's why it's a precise circle. You you get a really nice radius. Um, you can do it. So simple. So this is what this video is about and how I did that for these columns. I basically used an old shelf and some, which was basically a, a scrap shelf I was using in my shop. It had a, it's three quarter plywood and had a nosing on it. And I, I just need an extension table. Um, and basically it just extends the table of the bandsaw. And I, I extended to the right side and it allows me to figure out the radius of my circle and put a finish nail in the top of that plywood uh, and then you just spin your wood through to make the circle. Now the only limitation to the size of the circle that you can make is the length of your fence. If your fence was eight feet long you could make a really big circle. Um, I made my fence about, th I think I just used whatever the shelf was, it was like three, four feet and because I only needed 14 and an eighth circles. So to make the jig, the first order of business I did was I sent my jig, which was uh, my shelf, through the blade up against the blade. And I did that to cut the saw curve through the wood. And then I shut the saw off and um, I started to think about how I wanted to secure that to the table. I could have used clamps, um, but this this shelf had a nosing on it, a one by two nosing. So when I pushed it through the blade, I pushed the nosing right up against the face of the, 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 ba uh, the bandsaw, which gave it a nice index. And then, um, and that, it basically it stopped it, right? Index stop. And then I installed some scrap plywood pieces underneath with some screws to just kind of become like under clamps. And basically what they do is they, they became stability supports. It kept the fence from moving and uh, kind of locked it in place. I didn't have to use clamps as a result. Now, um, I could also, there's a hole in my, uh, I have a hole on top of my saw. I could have put a screw through and all that stuff. I, I didn't need to do it for this job to prevent the table maybe from lifting. A clamp could do that as well. Um, so... Think about that. So you got your extension table and then the supports basically underneath, they basically index that table to the blade and keep everything steady because uh, we're going to lay out our radius next for our circle stock and our blade. So I then level the table and I make sure that it's level. And all I did there was just get it level. I took an auxiliary piece of plywood leg or two by four, put it to the side of my fence and screwed it to it or put it underneath like a table leg. And it basically just supports the weight of the table level. A couple screws hold that leg right in place. Now, I mark a straight line from the blade down the extension table. Uh, because I squared it all off, I, I could use a combination square to do that, a uh, tape measure and a straight edge. And so you measure out down that table from the blade, and then I pretty much figure out the radius of my circle. So, you know, 14 and an eighth. Uh, circle that I needed, so I needed seven and a sixteenth radius point. So seven and one sixteenth inch out from the blade, I put a sixteen penny finish nail, and that is my radius point. Now to figure out the radius, just measure the distance from the center of your circle to any point along the way. It's basically half the circle. So the radius is half the diameter of the circle. So a fourteen inch circle is a seven inch radius. Um, so. I needed to uh, get 14 inch bases, so I needed to actually glue and clamp up two different, uh, couple, two pieces of two by eight PT to bake these, these blocks. Again, this was on the cheap, quick, quick fix. Assuming my wood piece would be square, right? Assuming it is square and I square it off once it's all clamped and glued, I just draw diagonal lines across it, crisscross, 
and that gives me my center point. Once I have that center point on my stock, I just drill a little pilot hole, eighth inch pilot hole that slides down over my 16 penny nail on the extension table. And it should line up, the edge lines up right with the blade and then just turn the saw on and slowly turn the wood clockwise through the blade, cutting a circular column base or a circle for you. After all three of my bases were made, I had to make three of these guys. Um, I then ran them over to my router table with a round over bit and I just rounded them over on both sides, took a, a sander, sanded them, and I was ready to go. I made my square base uh, on site with some pressure treated two by eights or something like that and mitered them, glued and, and screwed them all together, epoxied them all down, cocked them in place. I will note though, when you're doing this, a thinner blade works best for circle cutting. Uh, like a quarter inch blade is perfect if that's what you have. Um, and I also will note if you have a project where you want to avoid the center hole in your in your stock, for example, I don't know, maybe you're doing something, a furniture piece or a finished piece, tabletop, whatever, you can use two-sided tape and attach it to additional piece of sacrificial stock that slides over the nail and spins. So two-sided tape trick works great. I've used it before. Or if your stock is thick enough, you can drill halfway through or whatever and index it on the six penny nail and spin it. Just don't drill all the way through. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I just wanted to show you how I've solved the problem um, and, and you know, please the client in the process, low budget. Uh, if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up, comment, love hearing from you guys. And please consider subscribing. Um, hit that bell right there. Take care.